Okay, problem four deals with phasers. And it says, given the circuit shown here, find the complex impedance is seen at these circle junctions over here for omega equals one half radian per second. And before we jump right in and solve it, I wanna take a look at the bigger picture about what kind of problem is this really asking us? What it's saying is that driving this circuit, there is a voltage source that is pumping out a voltage, or perhaps it's a current source pumping out a current, but whatever it is, it's pumping it out at a frequency of omega t. So for this particular example, it's pumping it out at one half t. We could have instead converted that to uh, frequency in hertz. We know that frequency in hertz is equal to omega over two pi. So for this particular example of omega equaling one half, this would be one over four pi hertz. And now let's get back to the actual problem that was asked. That's in the side. The problem that was asked is how do we find out that equivalent complex impedance? So to turn these things into the frequency domain analogs, we have to know that the uh, impedance of a capacitor is equal to one over J omega C. We've got one capacitor in there and that's uh, one sixth hertz. So that six comes up on top. And the omega that we're dealing with is one half, so the two comes up on top, and the J can come up on top if we make it minus J. So we've got minus J12 ohms as the impedance of that capacitor. Just as an aside, remember that one over J, we can multiply that by J over J, and we get J over J squared, but J squared by definition is just negative one. So therefore one over J equals negative one. We can do the same thing to find our impedance of our inductor, except now we'll use the J omega L equation. So that will give us J times one half times L, which is 12. So that'll give us positive J six. And just as a check, our impedance of our capacitor is negative. Our impedance of an inductor is positive. That's the way it should be. So now we can redraw our circuit and we can redraw this part as 18 in series with one sixth farad. So as an 18 in series, so it adds to this minus J12. So we'll subtract J12 from it. And now we've gotten, we've encapsulated this part. And I'm kind of arbitrarily drawing it as a resistor. It really has, it's a, it's a mixed impedance. Let's see, this has an impedance, the inductor of J6. And then we've got our 12 up here. And we've got an impedance here, which is equal to minus J12. So now the next thing is we want to combine these two in parallel. We want to find out what is 18 minus J12 in parallel with J6. So it's important again to realize that when we're in the frequency domain, all the impedances simplify just as if they were resistances. As in the side here, if we had two capacitances in the time domain, if this was one farad and one farad in the time domain, these capacitances add in parallel and we'd have the equivalence of two farads between these two points. However, if we were in the frequency domain and this looked like minus J and minus J ohms, they would simplify using the rules of resistors to be minus J over two. Two identical resistors in parallel simplify to one half of the resistance. So don't get confused. It makes it actually a lot easier going in the frequency domain because we treat everything like resistors. This I would do by product over sums and we'd have uh, 18 minus J12 times J6 all over 18, plus J12 plus J6, which is just minus J6. And this is one of the cases when I would just throw it into the calculator rather than doing algebra and your calculator will tell you it's equal to this. And similarly, you can see these two guys are in parallel. So we'd have 12 in parallel with minus J12. So product over sums gives us minus J144 over 12 minus J12, and again, write in the calculator and we'll get six minus 
J6. There are neat algebra ways that you can simplify that. And usually I'm all for algebra, but not in this case. When we're dealing with complex numbers, just let the calculator do the heavy lifting. All right, this entire circuit redrawn becomes 1.8 plus J6.6 .6 in series with a six minus J6 resistor. So hopefully it's clear that the resulting impedance is just these two in series. So that will give us 7.8 plus J0.6. And the units are in ohms. And that's the answer to the first question. Let's take a look at part B. There is a part B to this question. And part B says, find two components that when connected in series forms the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit. So we wanna find two components that when connected together, form 7.8 for the real part and J 0 0.6 ohms for the imaginary part. So this, the real part is gonna be a resistor and the imaginary part will be either a capacitor or an inductor. Since it's positive, it will be an inductor. If it was negative, it would be a capacitor. So the resistance is pretty easy. It's equal to 7.8 ohms. You don't have to worry about the frequency, but to find the frequency here, we need to remember that Z sub L is equal to J omega L. And so our Z sub L here is J 0.6. And that has to equal to J times the frequency, but we know the frequency, we were given it to start off with it. So omega equals one half. So that's one half times the impedance that we want to find. So now we've got 0 0.6 equals one half L multiply both sides by two and you get 1.2 equals L. So now we can draw our circuit. It looks like a resistance of 7.8 ohms in parallel with a 1.2 Henry, that's pretty huge, inductor. And that's the answer.